sticks and they usually hit the ball. That so the first the safe. first rider to beat a horse to death yes. with one of those mallets gets a letter. Okay. Now, you know what? This game is sounding more stakes. and more interesting. Yeah. yeah. They, do they get lances as well yes. in, in polo? <laughs> now you're being ridiculous. <laughs> just, oh, dude, we could make such a great sport out of this. We just got to combine some shit, get rid of some humanitarian laws. It'll be fine. Uh, this episode is made possible by our their partners, Dirty B, Dirty Myra, B. and Myra. Pickett. Pickett! From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us, podtherapyguys at gmail.com. Broadcasting from the churn, that's Dr. Jim. I'm Nick. It's time for some Pod Therapy. I'm Whitney! Hallelujah! If you'd like to know where to sneak into the strip and watch the F1 races for free. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Here's therapy. how you do it. As little as a buck. Here's how you do it. We'll give you okay. the tips. Go on. Spend some time. Learn how to use run audio. Okay? Oh, that's a like, good uh-huh. start. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so it'll join take a pit you, crew. It'll take you a few years. Yeah. Okay. They're still Learn building. how to do that. Look. Establish a career. Have a good resume. I got a way smarter then, idea. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. You don't have to do this. Your caper's dumb. Listen to mine. You ever seen that movie Inside Man? With no. Clive Owen and Denzel Washington. Okay, you're off to a great start. Takes hostages in a bank. Denzel Washington's the negotiator. has got to get him out of there. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah heist. I've seen that. Okay. In the end of the movie, spoiler alert, turn this off if you want to go watch Inside Man. They, they they can't figure out where the criminal is. And like they escape. All the, all the hostages are out. The money is stolen, but there are no criminals. And so they figure it must be the, they're hiding among the hostages. And so they can't figure out who's a hostage and who's the criminal because they all have alibis. So it's this huge, like, really contemplative thing. That's not the point I'm trying to make. The bad guy, the king bad guy, is the one bad guy that Denzel did meet. So he could have ID'd him. He was hiding in the bank because they broke a wall. They built a little, like, station for him to hide in, reconstructed the wall. And then he stayed there and broke out, like, three weeks later. That's what you do with F1. It's under construction right now. You join a construction crew. You dig mm. yourself a little hole. Okay, a little Saddam Hussein hole. And then you just get in there. spider hole. There it is. You yeah. get in that bitch, and then you wait until November. You dig yourself out. Now you're going to need some granola bars and probably some Huggies diapers. <laughs> Maybe a bucket. Maybe <laughs> a bucket. I'd say at least five gallon. <laughs> Probably one bucket, five yeah. gallon bucket. Depends on how big the hole is. That's your move. Do you have any idea how much money you would save? Now, yes. You, it, specifically, we do. <laughs> yes, we, yeah. we know how much yeah. tickets cost. We can do that math. And then you just pop out of yeah. your little hole. And as long as security wasn't watching when you did it and nobody else saw you do it, you're fine. You're probably going to want to bring a change of clothes because you don't want to come out, you know, okay. with the construction outfit on. So, you're or right. you do. I've, I've been put in my place. Thank you. That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. No, if you come out with the construction outfit on and then security yells at you, I mean, you're like, no, 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 it's okay. I'm with the band. We're doing a village yeah. people tribute yeah. at the end of the race. I'm the construction worker. Have you ever worker. seen these videos of guys that walk through security checkpoints yeah. with a clipboard yes. and a safety vest? Yep. It works. Like, nobody's questioning that. Um, it works in the videos that get put on YouTube. Mm. It works in those videos. They don't put the videos of it not working. You know yeah, what? Those don't make it. I am again persuaded by Jacob. I mean, this is... He's All good. Oh, shit. I keep forgetting this is a goddamn Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a good point. Yeah. Uh, listeners. I've walked into many events that I did not pay for uh, just by either either looking like I belonged there or looking like I knew what I was doing. And uh, it's trickier than you think it is. Okay. Yeah. You, when questioned, do you just say, it's okay, I'm a doctor? Pretty much. That's yeah. a solid move. Yeah. I mean, but... it's that's that's not that far from what I said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to be here. Or demand their credentials. Sir, can I see your ticket? Can what? I see your ticket? One of, yeah. one of the tricks is you always talk to the security guy first. Oh, you, you make you, the move. You initiate. You go offense. Yeah, you initiate. Uh, conversation with the security you walk guard up, first. Do, do you do the move where you walk up and go, "Hey, where's Bill? I thought he Bill's not here. Where's Bill?" Like, do you, and then make it feel weird for him that you don't he don't know who Bill is. He's like, "Oh no, I'm don't Steve." Don't ask for a random person because then that person's going to be named Bill. You go with <laughs> yeah, a John. That's... I feel like you're going with a John. You got John. Oh, there's yeah, there are very no, few. No, Johns. I'm saying like the person you're yeah. talking to is going to end up being named Bill. He's going to oh, be like, "Yeah, I'm Bill." Be so fucked. Yeah. No, what you do is you go like, "Hey, I'm looking for the." Um, Yo, supply, Flux capacitor. I'm looking for like supply closet eight behind section twenty four. 
oh, that's over here. Exactly. Oh, section. I don't know about the supply clause, but section twenty four is over there. You give them like what two, three things oh, that they can direct you towards. Wow. And then you go like, hey, thanks, thanks, boss. Yeah, thank, thanks, you give buddy. Them, you give them, thanks, boss. And then you and then you head on. Also, can you hand me my gun? I I accidentally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks for that. I left it on your holster. That's it. If you could just give me that. All right. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and the ammo. I need that too. Hey, can I borrow your gun? <laughs> I thought I thought those were the instructions Jacob gave me. Yeah, and apparently, no, 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 my friend Jacob said that was supposed to. All. <laughs> apparently, I screwed that up. Mm, yeah, there's a lot of finesse, Nick. It, it's 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 all charm. It's all charm and charisma. If, you, yeah. if you're not coming in with that charm and charisma, they're, you're just not going to get through. Even if you ask for the gun, listeners, we got to talk. So I checked our iTunes. Okay, we have 70 reviews. Other podcasts like that them, did are you? smaller than ours. Have lots more. Mm. For instance, uh, Bad Therapy, who was on our show, mm-hmm. lovely people, and I was on their show, lovely people. But fuck them, they have 300 reviews. Okay. We have 70. We also, let's, before we criticize, no! before we criticize everyone, why don't we take the, why don't we try the tact of asking people, hey, if you haven't reviewed Pod Therapy over at iTunes, all right. Go over there and review Pod Therapy. We're going to revisit this in about a month. Okay. Maybe that's why we don't have many reviews. Yeah. yeah. Because you threaten our listeners. I, yeah. Looking back, I can see how that's maybe off color. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'm a little out of hey, line. Hey, you idiots. Hey, We're going to check back in in about a month. <laughs> if what we the still fuck? don't have that many reviews, then we're going to unleash Jim. All right. Oh, I think that's a good... Yeah, there we yeah. go. Th- yeah, then, that's then, fair. Then we'll bring out the ball. Then, that's it. <laughs> we can say we gave them a chance. That's yeah. Right. yeah. And we bring in the muzzle. Let's start with the, let's start <laughs> with the carrot, shit. and yeah. then we'll go to the stick later. Th- yeah. There you go. Jim's the stick. I'm just telling you, I, we can see on the statistics the the percentage of our listeners that have Apple devices. That, that's How many reviews? Thing. We have 70 reviews. How many of those 70 did you write? Oh, most. Yeah, okay. like a solid half. So is we have me on less, different devices at an Apple store. Less than seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the real number is terrible because <laughs> yeah. I am inflating these numbers as highly as I can. I know a lot of you pretentious Apple users are walking around with your iPhones. See, we said open this. that shit and we said no. Review. We're not going to threaten them. They know they're pretentious. That's not threatening. It's a, honestly flattery. If you're an Apple user, you're like, <laughs> I'm glad you know. I think I'm better than you because they do, Nick. They all think they're better than us. Jacob does. Jacob has an iPhone. Uh, I'm uh, and I am better than you. See, those two things aren't related. Th- no, those are the synthesis of things. I'll just speak to the listeners here for a second. I know that you don't want to do this because Jim is calling you names and belittling you. Just say it I ways. would really appreciate it. It would help me out. There you go. Okay, if you would give us a good review. Okay. 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 So don't do it for Jim. Yeah. You know what? Don't even do it for me. Do it for Whitney. Here's She's what I the want. innocent one in this. I She's want, had nothing to do with I this. I want new reviews Don't. to specifically reference one of us so that we can count who got the most. And if people in their review say, I'm doing this because Jim threatened me, that's good. That's one for me. If they say, I'm doing it because Nick asked politely, that's one for you. Oh. If they say, I'm doing it because I like Whitney and you guys are idiots, that's one for Whitney. Okay. And if they say, I'm doing it because I'm a pretentious iPhone user like Jacob, that's one for Jacob. Okay. I can live gonna, with that. We're going to filter these things. We're yep. going to see which category wins. It's fine. As long cool. as they get five stars. If you send us, if you put less than five stars, it's your ass. Okay, we're coming for you. That's that's not a threat. That's, okay. That's a fact. We're coming I, for you. We would really appreciate five <laughs> stars. <laughs> and then you can write whatever you want. All right. All right. Whatever. There we go. All right. Go to iTunes. Uh, the link is in the description, but I'm pretty sure if you're an iTunes person, then you don't even need that, do you? You just If you're listening to this on your Apple, you're already connected to the thing. I don't thing. know. I've never tried to review this show. What do you do? What is your... <laughs> what, what, uh, what really? And I, <laughs> you and son I thank of a you. bitch. No, 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 no. <laughs> thank you, Jacob. Thank you for not you don't want me re- You don't want me to yeah, yeah, You know what? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, I'm on the wrong side on that one. Yes. Yeah, thank you. That's the right move. Do you use... What is your app that you listen to podcasts on? I just use the, the standard podcast It's the podcast Apple app. podcast yeah, app? Yeah. Is that... Connected to the iTunes thing? Yeah. Okay, so that's all one thing. Yeah, yeah. I can review podcasts straight from the app. That's really cool, yeah. man. It blows I can do my it easily. mind. The same way I can easily go to <laughs> votegym.net. <sighs> I just choose the not to. The voting is over. Okay? I actively don't do it. Yeah, I go to it, and then I do yeah. nothing. I close my browser, Yeah, and then I go again just I to make sure to it's it, still there. I clear my cookies, <laughs> <laughs> and then I go to it again. Voting is now closed. Uh, thank you all for who did go to votegym.net, uh, but them days is over. We will find out in December who the winner is. 
But we know who the loser is. That handsome son of a bitch might be. Hmm. We will already know the loser. <laughs> that one has already been crowned. Uh, but yeah, please review us uh, if you haven't already. And we've got some great questions for today. First one, I just saw a really good TikTok on something about this. Anyway, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, the it's first okay. One, First one's titled, or, or just don't. I wouldn't worry about it. First one's titled "Worst Best Man" from Anonymous. Oh, I've got the. I've got. <laughs> you know what? Fuck this question. I've let's got just, a great, <laughs> let's just terrible best man story. <laughs> I'm excited for this. I'm, I'm gonna just, tell it before you read the question. Do it. I don't know what the question's gonna be. Do it just, just in case the question's case, sad. The question, yeah, that's exactly my thought. <laughs> I'm gonna tell my funny story first. Yeah, get that. And in then there. we'll come back to the that's sad right. question if it is indeed sad. Okay. This is smart. He's okay, edging. so. A few years ago, we went to uh, a friend's wedding. It, uh, we were friends with the bride. It was a uh, she was a performer here in Vegas. They've since moved, but at the time, she was a performer in Vegas, and uh, she had, she had worked with my wife a lot. Uh, I I had known her for many years. She's getting married to this guy who was younger than she is, and uh, they were getting married in Temecula. They were getting married in wine country in California. Uh, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. I like you know, Temecula. Getting married on a vineyard and all. On the way to San uh, Diego. Did, nice uh, place. Yeah, did, Temecula's a, a wonderful little town. I love Spain. Mm. And also that. Yeah. Wine yeah. country, yes. Um, so we are there, Vino, I believe. and we are there, The um, this is at the reception. So this is after the wedding has happened, and the best man gets up to give his best man speech. Yes. He's going he's gonna to give a toast and a speech at the wedding. Uh, he spoke for six, seven minutes. I would say that about five of those minutes, and you think I'm exaggerating right now, but I'm not. I would say for about five of his six to seven minute long speech, all he did was talk about how hot the groom's mother is. Oh my <laughs> God. The groom and this and this young man had grown up together. Now, oh now, the no. Groom, the mother of the groom had had her son at a very young age. So I think she's she, young. She's young. Oh, she's boy. um maybe two or three years older than I am. Oh no. And is very attractive. She's a very attractive well, a woman. Five minute speech, I would hope fucking so. It sounds like Helen of Troy. All he did, like he talked he didn't just talk about how attractive he she is though. He talked about how when they would come over to their house oh my when they God. were kids, no, how they would all try to sneak peeks oh at his mom no. in various stages of undress. Oh no! How they would masturbate. Oh thinking no! Thinking about his mom. Oh my! This God. is not at the bachelor no. party. I want to just re just, oh. just say again. The this is at the reception. Oh, this is like no. the grandparents are sitting oh, at the no. table next to them. <laughs> Uh, oh god this is oh no and meanwhile there is a table because uh our friend knew who we are and so she did not put us at a table at the front uh-huh yeah she uh, buried we, you right in the we back. were at the table by the bar uh-huh there it is uh, because she knows us <laughs> and uh and that was like the vegas showbiz table uh-huh so it was every you know it was 12 of us we all knew each other from various parts of vegas show business we were howling. <laughs> <laughs> this table, we were in hysterics. <laughs> I was crying. Because you were so moved. Yes. <laughs> so moved to, she is so hot. He's right. <laughs> I was cackling. Isn't love beautiful? <laughs> Isn't love beautiful? <laughs> and I believe that we owed the bride an apology. At the end, oh. Not to mention the, the mother of the groom. An oh, apology yeah. at the A end little of it. bit. Because I believe that this young man was being egged on oh. by our table's reaction. <laughs> oh, man. He was like, they're loving my speech yeah. back there. I'm crushing the speech. I don't know what's wrong with the rest of you, but that table <laughs> over there gets me. They get it. Jacob gets it. <laughs> like, You're talking about <laughs> masturbating oh. to the groom's oh, mother yes. at their house when oh. you were like 13. This is fantastic. That's got to be the most cringeworthy. Oh, I hope it's recorded. It was. Oh, it's recorded. Ever. It's out oh, there. Oh, yes. I mean, there was a setup. There was, you know, a I was about to say a cinematographer, oh, like a videographer. Geez. There was a videographer there recording everything. Oh, it was so weird what a best and awkward. Man move. It's it is oh, yo know, hands God. down the worst speech, <laughs> not worst best man speech, <laughs> but the worst speech I have seen. I would say second place is the one that uh, George W. Bush gave in the flight suit <laughs> mission, the mission accomplished banner. Okay, yeah. I'd say that's the second worst yeah, speech. This guy came in on number one, and William Henry uh, <laughs> William Henry Harrison who died the immediately. Yeah. Speech that he gave that killed him. I'd say that's number three. 
<laughs> so so you're saying G Dubs had the belt for a minute yeah. until until this reception. Until this guy. <laughs> wow, uh, I love stories like that. I, was uh, like, I mean, just in general. Forget who the subject is. Right. If you're giving a best oh. man speech at the wedding yeah. or, a, or a maid of honor speech or really any speech at yeah. the wedding, just leave masturbation out of it entirely. As a general rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can yeah. go ahead and skip that. Yeah. 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 If I mean, you're like, should write I the talk bit. about masturbation here? Usually no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I write the bit and I just have it in the margin. In case yeah, yeah. I want to pivot to it, I read the room. I feel the room. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah, depends. <laughs> no, you know what? He, I know he had a plan. Yeah. This guy yeah. had a plan. His plan was, okay, if <laughs> the first two the jokes yeah, don't that's land. Right. <laughs> I'm going to make one quick yeah. pivot at the mom <laughs> yeah. thing. And if I hear those Vegas guys losing their shit, <laughs> oh. the floodgates open. I'm going. <laughs> the train also, the bride stop. had... Um, told the bartender that no one was allowed to uh, have any shots. Oh, smart. If they, if they didn't know the password. Oh. And she only gave us the password. Oh, nice. She trusted you guys the va- with the password? I can drink and hold my shit together. Yeah. Okay, was this guy drunk? Like, how drunk? I, he I mean, had he had been, been drinking. Right? Yeah, he was He was lubed up a little bit. Okay, so this yeah. is not I assume like... both when he masturbated and during, <laughs> oh, during his speech. This wow. was not stone sober. Wow. No, but like, yeah. no this was yeah, at yeah. least a few beers in. Well yeah. done with the lube Thank callback. You. Thank you. That, God, he's an artist. That's what he is. He's not the best it's, sound guy for nothing. It's my craft. Right. Jesus yep. Christ. Well, we should probably read this letter now. All right. Um, I feel like I've probably already answered. I feel it. like yeah, I, didn't really really I think you probably did. Let's see how I close you got. Yeah. <laughs> hey, pot there. We should guys answer all Whitney. questions completely blind. <laughs> That's just, right. Just That's by the, the new title. bit on the title. Yeah. Let's start doing that. <laughs> okay. We'll just take one quick one. We'll see. We'll just see. whack it into the air and see where it lands. Let's just see how episode three hundred one goes. It's going to yeah. be fine. This is how we did the next talk about masturbation in your speech. All right. Next question. That's the move. All right. So we're all going hard on on two feet on. Don't talk about masturbating to the groom's mother. <laughs> uh, hey, pod therapy guys and Whitney. So I was giving ah! a speech about fucking my <laughs> friend's <Yeah. mom. laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> what are the odds? Oh, and the best part was I could see his mom. Like I had a direct line of sight oh. to his mom while oh, the speech was geez. happening, oh. and, and, and like your heart just broke as you're oh, as you're watching this so one. So awful. Uh, that didn't it didn't help that I was laughing. I can't directly believe at no her. one tried to stop it. I I think no Jacob was the problem because think, you I mean, need they silence needed to sniper. deter that. Yeah. They needed somebody with like a blow dart gun yeah. to just put him down. <laughs> An elephant trank yeah. area. That's but that's in theory that's supposed to be the best man's move or another member of the bridal party is to walk up and take the mic. And do it in a playful way, like "All right, Bill, you had enough." No, I think the you know? I think the move at that point has to be the groom. It's got to be I the think, groom. I think the person that, that's enough because yeah, yeah. like the bride can stop it, but if the bride stops it, yeah, now like a part of the weird. day is ruined. Yeah, yeah, let the groom get the up groom, and go. All the right, groom has that's to enough, know at that point. Jackass. Like yeah. I gotta, I gotta go stop my asshole friend. Uh, well, you can't send the groom's hmm. mom. Yikes. That's not gonna no, work. He's yeah. just gonna fuck her <laughs> right there. I mean, that's really what he's doing. He's certainly gonna try. The writing was on the wall. Uh, yeah. It pretty much was. Okay, anyway. it was on the wall. Oh, so much. Hey, pod therapy guys and Whitney. Hi. Hi, it's me, Whitney. I'm so excited to be getting married to my favorite person in less than two weeks. Congrats. He's wonderful, and we are a great match. Wedding planning has been a lot, but nowhere near as terrible as I thought it would be. The most frustrating part has been something I never expected. My, my fiance's choice for best man... <laughs> Is the worst. (laughs) Wow, guys. Jacob, you are clairvoyant. (laughs) Little background. My fiancé is a very hardworking dude in a professional career, which he loves and excels at. He's got many friends from the office who we socialize with frequently. He grew up about an hour from where we live and still has this one friend from high school who he's then uh, roomed with in college and considers his best friend. This friend is... The worst. Okay. He currently lives about a five-hour drive from us with a girl he is in a relationship with but isn't bringing to our wedding, nor seems to care about as he thought of just ending it when the lease is up. It seems like it's pure convenience for them to be together now. Yeah, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Fine, whatever, his deal. Anyway, in the over two years I've been with my fiancé, I've only met his best man once when he came to town. He seemed... Fine, but not great. 
It was hard to even have a conversation with him, which for me is wild. I'm a therapist and can usually manage to have a nice conversation with near anyone. He seemed relatively uninterested in knowing anything about me, didn't really engage when I asked about him, and outside of my fiancé, I could find nothing in common with this dude. He was just generally unpleasant to be around, and my fiancé seemed to act like a teen-slash-frat bro around him, which is nothing like what he's usually like. My fiancé asked him to be his best man, and I think they've maybe talked a handful of times in the year since then. When a mutual friend of theirs passed, it took him weeks to get a hold of his friend. He has done nothing for the wedding, including never responding to his RSVP card, not planning anything for a bachelor party or even asking about it, being the last one to get fitted for a tux on the last day possible, and then being so large they did not have one uh, to fit him, etc. I'm completely fed up with this man. I feel really bad for my fiancé, who now doesn't even get a bachelor party. My fiancé still regards him as his best friend which I cannot figure out why. Even his parents have made comments, and a mutual friend from when he was a teen made a comment about how terrible this best man is, or at least wow. was as well. My fiancé contently makes up, I think it's constantly, makes up excuses for his bad behavior. I try my best to keep my views and feelings on this to myself, since I'm sure it would cause a fight, which we rarely have. And it's not worth it. My questions are, are there any places I can realistically step in? Is this none of my business? How do I hide my extreme dislike while he is here for the wedding, especially with alcohol? I know I should not let him ruin my beautiful day, but I'm very concerned about it. All advice is so appreciated. Anonymous. I, well, I think you can give a pass, You can give a password to the, yeah. to the bartender. There's one. Yes. say nobody gets hard alcohol that's unless they know move. this password. Yep. yep, that's a move. I like that. Also, what happens whenever you walk up to the bar and you say, hey, can I get a, a Jack Daniels and Coke? And they say, oh, I'm sorry. We are not serving that. And I'm like, I can oh, see I think it. a mixed drink right is there. okay. Oh, no shots? I think I think there's no shots. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think there's no shots. Okay, okay. So they then you just say, hey, we're not really doing shots. Yeah. You say, but I saw Jacob just got shots. Yeah, it's ja that's Jacob. Don't worry about Jacob. And they say, oh, yeah, <laughs> that, don't worry about that. Yeah. Just, that's it. You just got to have a very assertive bartender who's comfortable with the negative mm -hmm. and just looks at the guy and goes, yes, you did. I went to... Uh, no, because what we did for our shots at that wedding was if we did shots, we, we because we were we, we knew the deal. We knew that the bride was was actively trying to keep her uh, husband's group of friends from being drunk assholes. Got it. Mm -hmm. And so we knew that we respected that, and so we did it out of sight of okay. of that group. You kept it on the DL. That's it. Okay. We just we just acted like responsible adults. Yeah. That yeah. Had gone to Temecula for the weekend. Yeah. And we're, we're like we're going to have a good time. Yeah. T and tastefully like, took body also, shots behind it. the stairs. That's it. Yeah, that's the right way to do it. Tasteful right Body name. Shots, another good band name. Oh, Tasteful Body Shots is, I think, the title of the first album. At the very yeah. least. Seafood, Sugar, Cookie, the very least, Tasteful, tasteful body, body Shots. shots. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, oh, write that down. We're going to forget Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. That's going into the... I got it. I got it. It's in the notes. Right, it's in the cool. notes. <laughs> Might also be the episode title. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, yeah, I think uh, the booze is easy. But you you got to work with easy. the venue slash bartender, whoever it is who's in charge of that. The booze is easy. And if you want... Uh, you can absolutely do no hard alcohol. You can just yeah. do you can just do wine and beer. I'm a fan of that. On weddings. I think that's fine. I think yeah. that the the low potential is I'm so much if I go lower to a than the high. Yeah, I'm not People mad if I go to a wedding their and beer. there's no and there's no whiskey. Yeah, give them some beer. Give that's them it. some wine. Have fun. Man. That's it. Have a good time. Don't get shit faced. Don't vomit anywhere. Right. We don't need liquor. That's it. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's an open bar. Yeah, I think that's dangerous. I think it's I think it's perfectly fine to not do hard alcohol at the at the bar. Who was your best man? At my wedding? Yes. My brother. Okay. So I didn't even get a call. I didn't get considered. Correct. I was alive. Yep. I you mean, sure I were. existed. Uh -huh. I had a alive. phone. That's yeah. true. I, I think yeah. I was a sparkle in my father's eye. Just to be clear <laughs> with anyone who's confused right now, no, Jim and I did not know each other when uh -huh. I got married. Yeah. Whose fault is that? And also, no, he would still not be invited <laughs> to my wedding if I were to get married tomorrow. Not even invited? No. Oh, I'm great at weddings. Come on, man. I've performed a few. I I, th I feel like I should at least be in contention to be that guy. Hmm. I want to be the priest. I've performed a few weddings as well. I would let you perform a wedding. Yeah, that yeah. actually sounds like I'm, a great time. I am a good 
wedding official. Are you a tuxedo shirt guy? Is that is that tuxedo shirt and ripped pants? No, no, no. I feel like that's no, I'm, the just, move. I'm I'm well dressed. I'm oh, well you, dressed you, at the wedding. You do the thing. Oh yeah. You come in for real. Absolutely. All right. Well I imagine a top hat like Mr. Peanut. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly he said a classy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dearly beloved, <laughs> do not pass go. <laughs> do not collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> All right, back to the question: Are there any realistic places you can step in? I think there are. And to answer yes. your second question, is this none of your business? No, I think it is your business because it's your wedding. The friendship, I don't know, as if is much of your yeah, business. It but it's, when it comes I think it's to the wedding, of, I think the friendship is kind of their yeah. business. But that's that's a stickier wicket. It is. And because you don't want to, you can kind of express your concern. You can mm-hmm. express kind of like, hey, I'm worried about him at the wedding. I'm worried about him causing a scene. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of worried about this. Can we have this discussion about how we can Yeah. Uh, can minimize... I ask you to talk to him you and want... lay down some boundaries? Yes. Yeah. You, want, some boundaries. you want your friend to be there uh, because you want him to be there. I want him to be there. Right. That's mm-hmm. all fine. But yeah, I think there's I think there are easy ways to do it without even talking to him. Okay. Okay. You know, things like dealing with the bar. Shot call. I mean, like they're they're absolutely. Yeah. Uh no, I mean, I think there are easy ways to to kind of wrangle someone without even going directly through them. No, you can if you think that, I like the direct. If you think the direct will work. If it's my wedding, the direct is certainly fine. And and my bride's like, hey, I don't like your guy here. I'm scared he's gonna lose his shit. Yeah. Now this other question though of like, he's a different guy with his friend than he is with other people. I kind of get that. No, I do too. Yeah. yeah. I think we're on the same way. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. going to be the yeah. case. That, that's definitely the case. And it's actually funny because like... Um, Especially Laura, a friend from like a different part of their life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have different levels of comfort. Now, I do think that your fiance is going to kind of grow out of that to some extent because... I think he already is. Yeah. I think he is too. And I think with the distance between him and his best man... Yep. That's only going to become more obvious. Yeah, yeah. that they're so. just going to their ways. It seems like they're already kind of starting to part ways a little. Yeah. bit. This problem is going to fix itself for exactly. you, Ryder, over the next. Oh, couple I of years. agree with yes. that. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. the different guy thing, or it's not, and you're going to hate him, and you're going to divorce him. Yeah, and, yeah. And it then, can also end in tears. Way, well, I guess either yeah, way, it's, it's going to be. A, it's not your problem forever. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. one yeah, way yeah. or another, this goes away, and you I don't have to do much. It's going to fix itself the first way. Yeah. Also, we totally rooting for your marriage, but you know, if it ends, it ends. So, like, I did this similarly. Uh, my best man was my friend, Josh, uh-huh. who died of cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, and you worked, was he alive me. at the time? Uh, yes, okay. actually fully animated. <laughs> okay. Uh, he was, he was just check, very just much in hell. I didn't know if you did like a weekend at Bernie's yeah, thing. No, he would have loved it. I'll be honest. He would be on board. <laughs> if he could have put that in his final will and testament, that would have been the request is I demand a weekend at Bernie's. So, uh, Josh, I got married very young. And Josh was my, I'd known Josh from sixth grade. We were buddies, uh, grew up together, that kind of thing. But yeah, like he, he had a different place in my life. He was my screw up friend. Yeah. Very much like this guy, yeah. you know, is your, your best man's a screw up friend. Josh, we were scared of Josh drinking at the, the wedding because he was a full blown alcoholic, ended up sending him to rehab later in life, you know, to get him help. Uh, he, he was a train wreck. But he was my train wreck. He he was my right, guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it, yeah. And it's hard to explain because no, he's a terrible friend. Like I had given <laughs> him a car at one point that, like, I I was I uh, had an opportunity to get a, a car from a family member, so I had my old car and I I could sell it for a little bit of money, like a grand or two. Or my buddy Josh didn't have anything. Called him over, buddy. Here's this car. It's yours now. Take it. I can't tell you how many times he would call me and be like, "Hey, man, I'm out of money. Uh, hey, I got your phone bill, buddy." Just we were brothers. It, it was a different kind of friendship because we were children together. And even though he was a screw up, and even though like he had not earned the right to be at my wedding, he was not a good friend. He wasn't a better friend than uh, the other two groomsmen I had, or even other people at the wedding. Eddie was at my wedding. Eddie was my college roommate. He's a good guy. He had his shit together was kind to me. Josh was a screw up, but you got to understand he was like my brother. He's my childhood friend. Mm -hmm. All the friends I make as an adult, they know adult me and that's fine. Mm -hmm. This is the guy who we got our first crushes together and like, you know, told secrets at summer camp. It's it's a different bond. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, there's, there's this sense of like, he's my brother, even if he's falling away from me, even if I don't even want to be around him that much, there's a sense of like, he's earned it. If it's not my dad or a sibling or a cousin, which those are my other groomsmen, 
But well, Josh, my cousin Greg, and my dad. My dad was my best man, but Josh was the only non-family who was part of the bridal party or the groomsmen party. So, I mean, I get this this theory, and I don't love the idea of coming in and saying, "Hey, you can't pick this guy." I don't think that that's great. No, 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 no. I, I definitely wouldn't intervene that way. I think you can express yourself. You can express mm-hmm. your concerns. I wouldn't. Here's 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 a, a kind of a tip. Don't go after this person as an individual. Hmm. Don't attack him yeah. as a person. Yeah. Express your concerns about his behavior. That's it. Yes, because yeah. there's a big distinction between those two, yeah. right? Because if you say, like, if, if I had a problem with Josh and I said to you, well, Josh's Which behavior right. is problematic because blah, right. blah, blah. I'm, I'm just that's concerned whole, about the event. Yeah, that's a whole different thing than right. me saying, Josh is an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah right. if you those come to me and go, different. hey, I'm a little worried Josh is going to show his ass at the wedding. I'll yeah. look at you and go, me too. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have any ideas? What are we going to do Yeah, why don't this? we go talk to him together? <laughs> And just I'm make sure he knows to be on the Josh level. is going to go weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, at the yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really thinking he might go weekend at Bernie's. Yeah. So yeah, but then the opposite is, hey, you know, uh, I I'm concerned. I don't think he's a very good friend to you. I don't think he's earned it. I don't think. Whoa, whoa, don't. That's yeah. a different conversation. Yeah. Who I pick is entirely based on me and yeah. my lineup. And and the the writer says, look, he's got a bunch of other friends from work, and and I get it. But those friends are different mentally. And I know that's how it was with me. Like you became yeah. my friend at work, yeah. but like you didn't know me as a child. Like yeah. we were grown ass men in our careers. No, I, met. This is the, a different version of me. I have that same experience. My, my cousin Brad came down a couple years ago. I think right before COVID came down, spent like a weekend down in Vegas. And that was the first time Laura had ever oh, met had him. seen you with like a childhood friend. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, no, she saw me with Ben, but like Ben, we kind of became friends like in fifth grade or whatever. But like with Brad, I grew up with him. Right. Like I knew him like since I was born. Right. Fuck Ben. Much, you know? I agree. It's not what I'm saying. No, but, no, we're on the same page. No, but like, but it was, it was different. And even mm-hmm. Laura commented, she's like, I've never seen you like that before. Right. Yeah. It's and a different it part of you. It wasn't yeah. bad. Right. She, she actually said, wow, you were really happy this weekend. Yeah. You know, it was, and it was just, and it was somebody that, you know, like well, I'm extremely familiar with this person. Right. So I'm very relaxed with this person. It's and a very it's a different, whole vibe. different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think the thing is, it's like you're kind of put in this weird situation between these two, you know, your fiance and your fiance's friend. Again, I think focus on the behaviors. Don't focus on him as a person. Also, just be careful because what you do say can cause a rift between you and your fiance. It can get weird. And it becomes, it becomes a topic that he knows that when this topic comes up, he is going to be expecting a fight or he's going to be expecting an argument. I've been in situations like that before where the person I'm dating, the person I'm seeing does not like one of my close friends. Right. And then it's just like, now I feel right in the middle. Right. I feel like I can't do anything. And it just, it's just a source of, yeah, it's not good. So yeah. No, I agree with, and this is where it's tricky because on one hand, when the writer says, how do I cope with this? I don't want this to like ruin my special day. This is a very tricky one, right? Because I think we would have multiple views on this. I think one part of us would go back to the don't leave your buttons out to be pushed kind of thing, Mm -hmm. which is the meaning of events are important too. And we do have some measure of control about whether we take offense or whether we're looking for fault or whether we choose to be, you know, in a peaceful state and and ultimately choose happiness. To to some percentage of this equation, we do have some control over that. Mm -hmm. There's another percentage of the equation, which is boundaries. If I have a special event or special life thing, I think I should have a little bit of a say of who gets to be in it because I have designed it. I want to enjoy it. And I don't know that I have to be held hostage by people in situations that I just truthfully don't want there. And Mm -hmm. it's going to be negative. There's a very interesting balance Mm -hmm. of, I think, all those energies, including the energy of your spouse. Talking to them about it too, saying, but I, I, I agree with you, Nick. I think that the best move on the table here is to say, hey, I'm concerned about behaviors. I just want to make sure that you've thought that out and you've talked to your friend about kind of what his role is. He doesn't seem very active in this. There's a script to follow. Do, do you feel confident that he's got this? And mm-hmm. and what are you doing to ensure that this event goes well? Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I wouldn't take offense to that. 
If I'm the groom, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that's fair. Like, yeah, sure. Here's, if he's gonna, I'll go call him. If he's going to do a speech, probably be a good, there's there's going to be a DJ or somebody there that has access oh, to the mute button. That DJ's ready. You got yeah. that guy on the it's call. It's got to be some sort of signal that like, yeah, cut him yeah. off. You want to go ahead and preemptively talk about the whole don't joke about masturbating to my mom thing. You want to get I that mean, out there early. It happens more than people realize. I think that's what we've learned today. <laughs> more than I thought. <laughs> comes up in speeches a hundred percent more often than Something I anticipated. Does. Yeah. <laughs> it's just on one. <laughs> there you it's go. Just rolling. You just can't throw yep. anything at this man. He's zipping him over the fence. Ah. Yep. Anyway, what writer, happens if you hold it in for too long. Mazel tov. <laughs> congratulations. I think that uh the original advice stands. I, I think that that was always the move. But congratulations. Always good to hear about yes. uh romance and love and I'm sure it will go well, but yes, I think there's uh, room here to draw a little bit of a boundary, but, you know, tiptoe because, yeah, even though this best man has not earned the right to be this guy's friend, I relate to that, you know, and uh, I think about it, and, and I, when I chose my best man at the time, well, it was my father, but when I chose the groomsman, and that included Josh, at the time I thought, I feel like at this moment in my life, that person has a legacy with me that would feel like it needs to be acknowledged today. I knew that in 12 months, we wouldn't continue to be friends. I probably wouldn't talk to him again after the wedding and didn't really. Uh, but at the time, that's what felt honest and, and it felt right for me and male relationships are complicated. So got to let it go. But, um, you know, maybe next time around, how, uh, next time you get married, next time you get married, you get to pick. Oh, well, so, I was going to, Jim got married. I was going to say Jacob. I was going to say, how, how are things going? You know, cause if you get married again, am I on deck? Like, no, am I, I, I believe I was very clear about that. Yeah, that was a past tense. That wasn't future tense. I said, if I were to get married again tomorrow, oh, fuck. I believe I started a sentence with those words yeah, or, or something. Again Nick, read the transcript back. Uh, yeah, You're not taking I'm, notes? I'm, no, I'm busy. You are the secretary. Oh, God damn other, it. All right. I'm we're going to take a stuff. quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about procrastinating problems. But we might move that to later. You're listening to Pod Therapy. I see what you did there. Today's <laughs> episode is brought to you by Ben and Don, Malia, Richard Macy, Sonny Boy, University Jeff, Samantha Cohn, Thunder Cougar, Falcon Scoop, Slurpy Kaye, Motherfucker, and Sandra McWaffle. And if you want to sponsor the show, become a therapy producer. Patreon.com slash Slurpy's therapy. Stern Daddy. Uh, still without a win. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Stern Daddies with all the wins. With all the wins, yeah. It, Jacob, honorary commissioner, has already awarded him uh, first place. But, yeah. you know, the score would differ. <laughs> it's pretty rough out there. Oh, I got... Uh, I'm not going to stay on this forever, listeners, but I, I did get the uh, the best version of a fantasy football win this week. Oh, the one-pointer? Nope. I was the second lowest scoring team in the league and for the week. And you still beat your and guy. I, and I played the oh. guy who was the lowest scorer of oh. the week. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> chef's kiss. Oh. Oh, Feels so good. So good. That's yeah. champagne. Yeah. That's, oh, lick his tears. I, yeah. thought, you, I thought you were going to say that you drafted Taylor Swift. Oh, and, yeah. And that. If you can get T-Swift on there, that's that's yeah. a good day. Okay, from Myra. Hey, uh Hey-o. Uh As I discussed with Nick, here are a slew of general knowledge, multiple choice trivia questions. These are two points if answered without the choices, one point if the choices have I like been it. revealed. I like this All formula. Right. This has been good to us. Yeah, solid. Which fast food restaurant has the largest number of retail locations in the world? I know this one. But the question is to find fast food, because we're all thinking McDonald's. But then you got to no, think, oh, shit, McDonald's. what if it's like Starbucks? It's not McDonald's. I want Subway, final answer. You're going Subway. Uh, so you're, you're, taking, you're going for the two. I want it. All I'm, right. I'm going Subway as well. I'll go Subway. Yeah, that was the money move. That guy knows how to gamble. Oh, that son of a bitch. It is Subway. It is Subway. What were the other options? Uh, Jack in the Box, Chipotle, Subway, McDonald's. Oh, I would have picked Subway out of those four. Yeah. On that yeah. list, the only one that I could have seen would have been Mickey D's. Because so Chipotle, of, I don't think that's Do you know national. the whole deal with Subway? They got bought by Arby's. No, 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 no. I don't know. They did <laughs> get bought by Arby's. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't care. It's irrelevant. Okay. Well, they did, though. The way that they franchise their restaurants is fucked up. Oh, yeah. yeah there's like a documentary on this. Yeah. 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 I saw that. It's like five every up. mile yeah. because they don't like they non-compete. Don't care. Yeah. yeah. They do they not They just sell care. them as fast as they can. Yeah. You want one? Here's owner, one. And yeah. they're mostly owner operators. Yeah. So like they're poor yeah. and then yeah. they have to like pay to stay yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah. But honestly, I like Subway. Everybody shits on it. 
I like Subway. It's really good. Yeah, and they've be- recently redone it. I do the meatball marinara. That's no, my see that meatball that, marinara with jalapenos. I watch them microwave the meatballs. That bothers me. Oh, I don't even have them microwave it. You just put cold meatballs on there. They're not cold. They're they're kept warm. Oh, in that stew pot. You don't even thing? do like the yeah, toaster yeah, yeah. thing. No, I don't toast them. Oh, what's uh, the point the of having fresh on. bread if you toast it? Okay, that look, you're not wrong. Bread. I don't no, no, like no, that. he's no. not wrong. Thank that's you. it's stale. Thank you, Jim. You're making stale. That's what it is. Like, and no. I just got in a fight with that's, this in my no. family because I ordered a pub su- uh, sandwich at, at the bar when you and I went, but yeah, I ate yeah. before you got there. Jim, yeah. Jim, and take a breath. No, I was talking to my family, and they're like, "Oh, what did you have?" And I was like, "Oh, I had the club, but I don't get the bread toasted." And my spouse was like, why the fuck would you not get the bread toast? That's the whole goddamn point. It's like, ew, no, that's stale bread. You're just ordering stale bread. No, it's bread. not. That's stale bread. It's not stale. It's, it's toasted. It is indistinguishable from stale bread. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it is. Um, that, that's, you're just wrong on that. It, Nick, it, your it argument is suffering me. because it, Jim is making a poor <laughs> argument. I know. Like, we were on the same page. Like, yeah, Jim and I agree. It's, it's gross. Like, and then he's like, it's stale. I was like, ah, shit. No, that's yeah. why you don't like there it. There it goes. Yep. You don't like it because it doesn't, no, it doesn't add anything except all. staleness. No, I, I, have adjudicated, I have adjudicated this argument, and I'm going to go ahead and say that Nick has lost this argument because of Jim. <laughs> because Jim took Nick's side. Nick <laughs> lost this argument. <laughs> man you're all just upset because i'm speaking the truth i'm just saying fresh bread is amazing so don't yeah. ruin it by toasting yeah, we're on the same page but it's not stable we are singing the same song <laughs> no nope, you're not what we agree that you, you're ruining you lost, something good jim you by lost changing nick's its texture <laughs> to something bad you've lost nick's argument okay for him. that yes we're on the fine. same fucking page fine. okay also i wonder jim, what the is, process is, is toasted bread stale yes there it's stale go. bread <laughs> Nick's argument is I, done. Look, I don't know what the chemical Nick's reaction is that is makes toast. bread stale, oh, but I'm pretty God. sure that toasting just does that faster. Nope. That's no, what I think is happening. Yeah, good. You can think that. Right. Still, still bread wrong. is toast bread. That's all that is. It's just hard bread. No, nope. mm, I sure want some hard fucking bread with my there's, meat and there's cheese. There's one really easy way to know that it's not the same thing, and that's that there are two different words for it. <laughs> that, that helps. <laughs> that's a good indicator. Okay. Someone, someone went ahead and yeah. defined two Otherwise, separate words. Otherwise, we would just words. call everything toast. Right. <laughs> Oh, wow, it, this bread I is left, toasted. I left yeah. my bread out too long. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's toasted. toasted. <laughs> yeah. I kind of fuck it is. I think that's what that is. It probably something to do with like wow. oxidizing. I don't. I don't know what it is. I don't know what makes things stay so hard for this argument. Now the I'm going to go ahead and say that the feel. last argument that Nick won, he is now lost. The mouth feel <laughs> is identical. The stale bread is the toasted. Bread. I was I was at uh, yeah I was at Bed Bath and Beyond the other day, and they had a uh, a staler oven. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got it. You yeah, got to do little, that. Set little, it to stale. Yeah, yeah. Put the bagels in there. Yep. Set it to stale the bagels. Yeah. That's fucking what this is. It's so dumb. Oh, I love to stale some pop. I'd never get toasted bread. It's the worst. It's the worst. But anyway, here's the one on. exception though. All I right. will eat toast with eggs. So like, if it's breakfast, like, oh, there's some buttered toast with some eggs. You don't like a nice fresh break, a, a fresh baked bread with uh, that nice like crust around the bread or anything with, when it's still piping hot out of the oven. Oh, you mean the stale bit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. You don't well, like that? I guess I do, but I, I'm I'm aware that it's stale. <laughs> I so like, bread, I like a stale crust so bread is never with fresh. a soft inside. By your definition, bread is never Depends fresh. Depends on the sandwich. So like, if I'm getting a club sandwich, I don't want stale bread. But if I'm having what he just described... No, but bread, if it's nice. baked... Well, if it's baked, well, it's no. got to have the hard piece You make a thing. Outside. you got to do the thing that makes it the bubbly, soft stuff. That's bread. <laughs> if you cook it to get that, I like that. But then once you toast that again, you're just stalifying it. And the mouthfeel is hard bread. I don't Nick, want hard bread with my sandwich. This argument I know. so badly. I know. I'm mad at myself. Yeah. That's who I'm mad you at. You did this. We're on the yeah. same, this is your fault. We're on the same Is there another side. question or are we moving on? Yes, there's no, we're moving on. Isn't that another trivia question? We're not right doing now? trivia? No, there's a whole bunch, but we don't have time for this. We're shit, Great. we're two hours into this. All right, <laughs> fine. Fuck it. All right. Procrastination problems. Hi. I've been struggling with procrastination lately, and it's starting to negatively affect my health. I have a few things I need to get done, ranging from filling out the, some paperwork for the local government, which I find stressful since I've had a hard time understanding bureaucratic language, to other minor tasks that I should be doing, but for some reason I have a hard time actually getting done when I have this uncomfortable task to deal with. I find myself putting everything off and just doing stuff that takes my mind off the stress I feel if I think about these tasks. This, of course, only makes the problem worse. Do you have any tips for getting out of a procrastination loop and to get things done before everything just gets too overwhelming to deal with? 
or tips for dealing with this when the amount of stuff you need to do has grown to an uncomfortable proportion. Regards, Chris. Uh, right. You have to move to a different place, uh, mm-hmm. adopt a, adopt a new identity. That's what you do. And mm-hmm. just start over. You start over. At mm-hmm. some point, the chore list is so big that you yeah. go, you know what? I could fly to Costa Rica. I I'm bad about this, my too. Own death. I'm bad about procrastinating. Are you guys bad about procrastinating? Yeah. I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, the You're easy kind of fix to this is to procrastinate later. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's... We're just going to keep running this bit. We, we do don't it. have a lot of plays. <laughs> We can run this play. I feel like, you know what? I it's think, a quarterback sneak. I think we got, Just keep going. Yeah. We, <laughs> we got five more. Yeah, we can get a few these. more of these in there. Yeah. No, I think, um, all right. So here are some tips that I do. Number one, I recognize the things that cause procrastination. Um, usually, like if it's work related, mm-hmm. I've got certain things that like I get distracted. So removing distractions. There's, okay. That's number one. That's it. Yeah. That's so the first thing is like, I know my phone, like if I've got my phone with me, the other thing sometimes is uh, music. Sometimes is, you do. Sometimes you have to just treat yourself like you're a child. Oh, that's yes, absolutely, absolutely true. I'd be like, yeah, I, have yeah. to, I have to put my phone yep. in a different room. I yes. do that. I 100% yeah. do that because yeah. I can't be fucking trusted because of TikTok. I'll do that. There's, uh, there's music <laughs> what gets me. that I found that is helpful and music that is hurtful. Okay. It, so, can I guess which one's helpful? Go for it. Instrumental. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anything, can I guess which one's hurtful? Anything with lyrics? White Snake. Oh, no, 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 no. No, Instrumental and White Snake together. Okay, are in okay, one that's, side. A, that's one playlist. That's okay, one side. Got White it. Snake yeah. Instrumental. Yes. White Snake, yeah. <laughs> Exclusively White Snake White Instrumental. Snake unplugged, played by a xylophone. <laughs> fucking David Coverdale just up there <laughs> rocking it. Exactly. <laughs> that's how I can Just scream in his lyrics. <laughs> Acapella. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, no. So, like, it, th- that's that's one thing that. By the helps. way, yeah, I know who the fucking lead singer of White Snake is. Oh, that we've was had a flex. this. We've it had this flex. conversation. Yeah, because there was a trivia question that I asked about how many members were in the band. Ah, and he knew yeah. him and by yep. name. Yeah. Uh, no, because there was like forty six of them. Yeah, oh. it's, it's a fuck yeah. ton of people <laughs> who've been in White Snake. <laughs> I think right. I've technically been in White Snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm credited. <laughs> yeah. IMDb. Uh, I think I'm on an album. <laughs> Also identifying your, uh, like when your great work moments are. Yeah. Like, so I know like, yeah, my prime time is going to be at this such and such time. Uh, the other thing now, when I start to get, uh, overwhelmed and the list becomes too long, then I'll, I will actually write stuff down Mm -hmm. and I put things in my calendar. Yeah, that so helps like, a lot. Yeah, so I have like certain days that are going to be like paperwork days, and mm-hmm. I don't identify what I'm going to be doing. But if I start falling behind, then I'll go into my calendar and I say, okay, from nine until eleven, yeah. I'm working on this report. That and helps you a both, lot. You both yep. work at home, yeah. yeah. So this is this is difficult. We both for you work guys. at Nick's house, right? A lot of people <laughs> don't I mean. know that. You both work at Nick's home. Yeah. <laughs> Only one of us is aware of that, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> until now, I'm very quiet. <laughs> I do all my therapy sessions in a low if, whisper. <laughs> if I have something that I have to do with the house. So like today, for instance, I have, I have something that I've been procrastinating on. Uh, are, you, are you familiar with the OSHA courses? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So I, I'm it's, it's wrapped around. I have to take an I have to do an OSHA course. I'm in the middle of doing that now uh, as of today. OK, because I've needed to be doing it for a while. Mm. And so I was like, OK, here we go. Monday. I don't have a lot during the day. I can get stuff knocked out early, and then I can plug away on this OSHA thing for like four hours. Right. Mm-hmm. You have to set it aside. But Budget yesterday, I said to my wife, I said to SJ, hey, tomorrow, I'm going to work on this OSHA thing. Mm. And I did that so that if I <laughs> oh, wasn't working on it, yeah. she wouldn't like shame me. She wouldn't be like, hey, you need to get to work on that. She wouldn't do any of that stuff. Yeah. But she would ask about it. Yeah. yeah. yeah She'd yeah, be yeah. like, I thought you had to do that thing today. Yeah. That yeah. way it's out there. Yeah. I like that a lot. That really does So it's work. just like, it's a little bit of like... I'm just going to toss this to you and you will yep. like she, she won't try to hold me accountable on it. She's not going to no. actively hold me accountable on it, but she will ask about yep. it if I'm not doing it. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Like when I, when I sat down lunch today, she was like, are you, are you doing that OSHA thing today? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to eat lunch and then I'm going to start doing, I'm, I'm going to work yep. on that right after lunch. Yep. That uh, totally works. And she was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I was going to see if you wanted to go to this. I said, nope, I've got to, I have to, I do have to do this. That's great. I like that strategy a lot. I also like your strategy of calendaring it mm-hmm. because that happens to me a lot is I'll get overwhelmed with all the things that I know I need to do. And step one for me, I use a checklist. So mm-hmm. like I have an app on my phone and I'm able to make like a checklist that you can like touch little boxes when you mm-hmm. complete them and that's satisfying, but I'll fill up that checklist 
And then I will set a calendar time when I'll look into the future and I'll find an opening where it's like, okay, I definitely have nothing going on during this window. And then I'll set an alarm so that my calendar yells at me Mm -hmm. and I'll see it coming and it will remind me the night before, hey, tomorrow's chore day. Don't forget about this. Mm -hmm. And then the thing goes off. I go right to my note. And then here's a real trick that I, I use sometimes. This is a very rare one. Every once in a while I have to use this. Depending upon how deep in the woods I've gotten with chores that need to get done, especially administrative stuff, like anytime it's like I have to renew a license or I have to pay a bill or pay a healthcare bill, whatever it is, it's like sitting on my desk forever. I never mm-hmm. want to do it. That stuff, it, it takes five seconds. Yep. But the mental energy of knowing, okay, I've got to get this perfectly right, like this bureaucratic thing they're talking about, I totally get that. Mm-hmm. Like whenever I had to renew my business license, I put that off for so long I had a late fee. Because it was like, oh, I'm not sure what buttons to click, and I don't remember what the thingy is. And so I was so stressed about something very simple. I get that. Mm -hmm. But what I'll do is I'll go through my checklist, and I'll give things points. And so one point for the easiest shit, two points, up to three points for really difficult things. And then I'll create a prize list that's like, okay, if you earn 12 points... You get to take yourself out to sushi. Then you get the pencil eraser. Yeah, that's right. It's honestly <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. Like, it's just 100% Chuck E. Cheese. And then I'll create, like, this little reward category of things that, like, are kind of splurgy. I won't do them. But, like, I'll be like, oh, you get to go to the hot dog place and go get hot dog. It's just, like, things I just wouldn't do. But now I have a thing, like, okay, well, I'm going to do it because I want that hot dog or whatever. And then I'll give myself points when I complete shit. And then I earn one of the rewards. Which gives me the freedom to chip away at easy things, mm-hmm. too. Because sometimes I'll procrastinate on my list, but now I'm at least being productive with my procrastination. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing back like the level three difficult one, but I'm tricking myself into being like, oh, I'm just going to do these ones and twos and I'll put off the three. Fine. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm winning. Like yeah. I'm still getting things off my list. Yeah. I'm still procrastinating on one big item. I'm cleaning out the list though. And I get that pencil so, eraser. I hate having to make phone calls and I hate having to make phone calls to sort out problems. Mm, yeah. Especially when it never comes know how to much like time it's going to take. When it comes to like health insurance, uh, shit like that. Yeah. Because yeah, number 1, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And number 2, I don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah. I I could be on the phone for 10 minutes, I could be on the phone for 5 hours. I have yep. no idea. Right? So, I got a bill the other day uh because I had some lab work done and the bill guess how much it was for lab work? Oh, lab work? Yeah. 100 bucks. Uh, you're short by $1300. Jesus Christ. That's it a was, nice lab. It was Jesus. a pretty big ex- yeah, wow. $1400. $1400 bill I got in the mail. Because my insurance Did I think you can watch F1 from that lab. Yeah, uh, right. I could. Yeah. But I looked at it and it's like, well, my the Aetna declined it because I don't have Aetna. Yeah. <laughs> Checks so out. That's probably uh, why that is a problem. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like you, you would have just sent this bill to McDonald's. Yeah, they right, probably would have yeah. declined it too. <laughs> but, like, so I had to call them. And so, what I do, another little trick is when I have to make a phone call like this, as quickly as I can, I put in the number and hit send, or hit. Before you could talk dial. yourself out of it. Before I, yeah. And it's like, well, it's dialing it's ringing. now. Yeah, yeah I'm I gotta, in. That's I have to funny. do it. It's the cold water approach. Yeah. yeah. So I just, yeah, just plunge right in. I like that. Now, these are all really good tricks. And, you know, it's a thing. I mean, we all relate to it. It's something that I think everybody does. You got to have your little move to, you know, get yourself through it. You tell somebody about it. Give yourself accountability. Yeah. Set it in the calendar system. Give yourself points. Make it a game. Cold water jump. I mean, these are all things that I think we've all used. And yeah. so take uh, take your pick there, writer. Hopefully something in that barrage of answers gives you something to work with. But it's very relatable, Chris, and uh, good luck. So get on it, okay? Make your list, announce it, get onto our Discord, and uh, tell other people what you're going to do. I think we even have a whole thread that's like something. I did a thing. Yeah, I did a thing. There it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, get on there, tell us what you're going to do, and then brag about it when you do it. We'll, we'll I got celebrate. on Discord this week. Did you really? I, saw I, that. Even, I even commented on some yes. stuff. Yes, and wow. I was going to comment back, but I was like, hey, I was on, yeah. I was on Discord for a minute. Wow. Yeah. See, that's what you're missing out on. Patreon.com/slash/therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe Jacob will talk to you. 
<laughs> Who knows? Results may vary. We're not guaranteed. Maybe it. you can be his best man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've got a better shot than Jim. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about becoming a better therapist. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Ben Don, Malia, Richard Macy, Sonny Boy, University Jeff, Samantha Cohn, Thunder Cougar, Falcon Scoop, Slurpy Guy, Motherfucker, and Sandra McPancake. <laughs> and would you like to sponsor the show? Become a therapist producer. Patreon.com slash therapy next question where is uh where in the world is oh okay, okay. So i had to read this a couple times where is recognized as what like what location is recognized okay. as uh the hottest temperature ever recorded on earth milwaukee <laughs> god damn it he got it yeah he got there first cool. in okay. See, this is a good question because I wonder Death if it's Valley like... Death Valley is the Well, if it's obvious. of all time, it's going to be like the fucking Chicxulub crater where the asteroid killed the dinosaurs. I, okay. Recorded. Okay. Recorded. Did it uh, say that? Highest temperature. Did it say that? Yeah. So, recorded. Okay. Ever recorded on Earth. Yeah. I'm going to say Death Valley. I mean, Valley. technically Big Bang. I'm going to go for the two points. Okay, yeah, technically Big yeah. Bang. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is it? I don't think it's Death Valley. I don't think it is either. I think, I think that's be... the I think that's the highest like in I don't know what the, the U.S. Is. or maybe North America. Isn't it in like Iraq? I don't know what the city would be. I mean, I'm thinking like. Do you want multiple choices? Yeah, I want I want choices. You're, I'm gonna wait you're on going, choices. You're too. going Death Valley. Though. I'm going Death Valley. Okay. I'm going for the two. All right, yeah. I'm gonna take the. Choices. I'm gonna take choices. Okay, uh, uh, I'm gonna pronounce this Mitiraba, mm. Kuwait. Okay. Oh. Death Valley, California. Sure. Yeah. Yuma, Arizona. Uh huh. Key West, Florida. How's oh well, the Yuma? the area that I was guessing is not on the list. Oh, I, really? I was thinking somewhere in the Sahara. Mm. Well, isn't Kuwait in there? No, no it is different not. continent entirely. <laughs> really? Yeah, yep. you're not even uh, not even on the same. Not even close. Where's part of the, the planet? fucking Sahara? Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Where? What do you think? Kuwait Where the is? fuck is Kuwait? Middle East. So. Yeah, those are different. Mm-hmm. Are they though? Yeah. Asia and Africa. Yeah, they're different. Two different places. Middle East yep. is Asia? Yes. It's by it's China? The... Well, well, the reason it's called uh, the Middle East is you had the Far East. This yeah. is this is all like very old talk now. Yeah. India, China. Yeah, you had you had the Far East, which was China, Japan, like that you you had like the Silk Road that would take traders out to out to these places to uh to trade for goods and huh. services. But then you had the Middle East, because it's closer, which was basically on the way, and it was a stop. It was a stopping point for uh, traders taking the Silk Road out to the Far damned. East. All right. I believe I believe Kuwait and, and I want uh, Kuwait. the Middle East was was part of the uh, the Silk Road. I'm there, taking so. Kuwait. That's okay. that's the I think that's. I mean, Kuwait's what's what's the other two? It's Yuma and do what's Key the other West, one? you Key pussy. West. Key West, Florida. Oh, Key West, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Stick on Key West. Wait, wait, wait. Does heat index count? <laughs> oh, shit. I That's probably so. what it's going to be. It, is it like, it's probably going to be a key, yeah. It's 95 degrees, but it feels like uh -huh. it's 132. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, like your super humid day. Yeah. And just 92 degrees. Uh, I mean, out of those, I, I got to go Death Valley as well, then. All right. It is Death Valley. Shit. There we go. Shit. So. Nick's in the lead with two. I've got one. Uh, I got four. Why do you? Oh, you got three. Four. Well, no, we all have we all you have, have the two. two from the first one, so I didn't I yeah. didn't count those. Oh, yep. so it's four three two. Yep. Yeah. Shit. Nick's right. winning by a point. Nick has plus one. Oh, okay. We're we doing golf rules. Plus, or Nick has plus two. I have plus one. Jim has zero. Yeah. Becoming a better therapist from anonymous. Easy. S Become a life coach. There it is. That's yeah, fine. Bam. Yeah. Right. There they are. Life coached. I love whenever you guys do that in Whitney's here. I listen to one of the episodes. And it's oh, 300 yeah, yeah. And, 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 299. Uh, it's 299 when it happens. And Whitney just being like, holy shit. <laughs> There's lights. <Yeah. laughs> yes, yes, there are. They are strobes. They are very bright. Yeah, damn. Those are those hurt my eyes. Yeah, I should stop look looking. At I should not do that. Uh, becoming a better therapist, sleepy in supervision. Hi, pod therapy team. I am a registered marriage and family therapist intern. I have a full-time job and was hired on with a counseling center in which I gained practicum and internship hours while obtaining my master's degree. My goal is to quit my current position and start my second career as a therapist once I obtain my hours and pass the state exam. Based on the number of hours I'm getting right now, I should be able to move into full-time mental health care in about a year. My days are very long. 
working 10 hours a day at my full-time position and five hours of counseling in the afternoon and evenings. Holy crap. Jesus, that's a long day. I found your podcast during practicum and was instantly hooked. I've listened to the entire back catalog and I'm also a patron of the show. I've heard both Jim and Nick say that you learn so much more about being a counselor or therapist via experience as compared to undergraduate or graduate work, and I would agree with that assessment. This podcast has helped me tremendously by providing insight as well as deep dives. Much love. Here's my concern. I'm not getting much from my supervisor during supervision. He's been doing this for 30 plus years and is rather stuck in the 70s. He accepts insurance, so he's always seeing 12 clients a day, so I get that he's probably tired, but he tends to nod off during our sessions, and it's clear that I'm just a box he must check. I've noticed that if I mention that I have a client with some sort of sexual addiction, he seems to perk up. <laughs> so I'll sometimes... <laughs> I think it just means it's a topic the supervisor's interested in. No, no, I know. That's but how like, I'm thinking it's, it's, too. It's, it's still it's funny. It's so funny. Yeah, it's, still, it's, it's pretty like, funny. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, this is about sex? Oh, okay. Uh, satin All panties? Right. What? Uh, I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that if I mention that uh, a client has sexual addiction, he seems to perk up. So I'll sometimes throw it in there that I have a client who likes to jack off rattlesnakes <laughs> just to wake him up. Well, I haven't really done that. I think it's called but milking it has rattlesnakes. crossed my mind. <laughs> like Jim, I'm a huge Audible fan, and if I'm not listening to pod therapy, I'm listening to a book while driving. In Jim's latest deep dive on solution focused brief therapy, he mentioned that he's obsessed with the characteristics and skills which make a great therapist. And so am I. Do you have any suggestions of books that you have read that have provided any insight? Thank you, Anonymous. Pronouns are he and him. This is interesting. Yeah. The the So, a couple of things on this. Supervision, man. I mean, this happens. But, like, it's interesting because I'm not even that mad at the supervisor. You're not? I mean, dude, this poor... I mean, look, do I think that you should be a supervisor? Maybe, maybe not. But but I think the supervisor works for the agency. Because didn't the writer say that they're an intern with a counseling group? And so they're seeing, a, a, like, a lot, like 12 clients or mm-hmm. something like that a day. And then so they're he's, doing a side hustle. he's not hustle. a supervisor by choice. I Yeah, I think that it's a supervisor... With an agency, and that really changes how I feel about this because – so we probably have a lot to explain. I do have a book recommendation, so just don't let me end this question without going to that book. Um, but, okay, so a couple of uh, things we should translate from the letter for general listeners. Um, to become a therapist, you go to bachelor's degree, then you go to grad school. Grad school is about the size of a uh, law degree, so it's about two or three years. And during that time, you also uh, start being a therapist, but you are a student therapist. So you're still in school, you're taking classes, and those classes are called practicum and internship, and the writer talked about that. And so you leave school for those classes, and you go volunteer as a therapist at a clinic. And you're seeing real patients and you're doing the work. Even though you are not in any way licensed, you're not even licensed on a learner's permit, you are just a student. But you are being watched over by fully licensed therapists who are teaching you. And you do this for a certain number of hours for a semester of school or sometimes two semesters of school. And you get a grade. And, and the the um, the person in the field, the therapist, uh, writes a letter to your professor and says, here's how well I think they did. Here's what they can learn. Here's what they should work on. The professor gives you a grade. You finish. Then you pass grad school. And then whenever you leave grad school, you start your career in the rookie years where you're kind of on a learner's permit. And different states have different words to describe that. In Nevada, we call that an intern. And this writer said that they are a marriage and family therapist intern. And so that means they're on their learner's permit. And you do your learner's permit for another two to three years. You have to see a certain number of patients. We call that earning hours. And usually you have to do a certain amount of group, a certain amount of individual work. You also have to see a mentor, a mentor therapist that in our trade we call a supervisor. So that supervisor is usually an elder therapist. They've been in the career for a while. They've taken special extra training, um, and they've been granted special powers by the board to train up new therapists. So that's how that works. And as an intern, a rookie, a learner's permit holder – You've got to. By see, the way, no one calls it learner's permit. That's yeah, just I'm just shit. translating that. Okay. Yeah, that's All just. Right. I'm just translating want, it for the. I pop. don't want our listeners to go no. out and be like, "I want to get my learner's permit." Yeah, yeah, no, no, no sorry, <laughs> okay. yeah, intern. Yeah, it's an internship, or yeah. some some states call it an associate. Even the word intern becomes confusing because I know. sometimes people yeah. call that 
when they're when they are a student. Right. And there's a difference between an internship as a student versus a board intern. Right. We usually call so, you a student intern. Right. So and then once you're graduated, you are a licensed intern, a registered intern. So or when a board we say intern. intern, what we're talking about really with that is that with your state board, yeah. you have signed up with them. You've yeah. you've re- they recognize you as being an intern. You have powers. Yeah. yeah. You actually are a therapist. You're a junior therapist. You're not independent. You're under the oversight and tutelage of your supervisor. Mm -hmm. And so during that two to three year period where you're seeing patients, you're earning money. You you can have a job. When you're a student, you can't earn any money. But whenever you've graduated and you're on this learner's permit, you can. And so usually you're getting paid, but you're getting paid much less than what you'll earn whenever you're fully licensed. Now, what's tricky about this, and this is something that – so I'm going to tease it now, um, but it will be released soon – I've recorded a series that I've called The Seven Deadly Sins of Psychotherapy, and each sin is something that I feel our profession does wrong and needs to be reformed. And this goes back to what the writer's talking about, where they said, hey, I really like deep dives on how to become a therapist and, and like content that's directed for the profession. That is what this is. This is your Christmas gift, writer, because each one of these uh, installments is taking on something about our profession that has gotten out of control and needs to be brought in. And the very first sin has to do with what we're talking about here, that in our profession, in our our healthcare discipline, unlike other ones, there is a huge burden on those in the first part of their career. Whenever, it, like, let's say you want to become a medical doctor, you go to medical school, and then whenever, and you do some student work, you, you get to train while you're a student, just like we do. And then when they graduate, they join a fellowship. And at a fellowship, You're getting paid to be there and be a doctor somewhere and be trained by other doctors. And those doctors are being paid, usually by the government. The government has fellowship programs that they pay for because we would like to be a nation filled with doctors. So the government pays your teacher, who is an experienced uh, doctor, also pays for the facility you're in, also pays you, the learner, to do the work. And you're serving people in the community for a reduced cost so that you can learn. That's how other medical disciplines do it. Ours does not. The government does not fund your internship at all. What happens is the learner, in this case the writer, has to pay out of pocket. And in in today's dollars, it's a lot. Like today, a supervisor will run you $100, $150 an hour. And you have to see usually two supervisors a week for two to three years. And that's all coming out of your pocket. Now, you, and I'm going to tell you right now, they do lot. not accept anything other than today's money. They they will not accept 19. No, well, no, you know, they won't. D- d- yeah, just it's got to be stamped it's 2023. Be 2023, minted 2023 money. Yeah, I'll accept signed by this money. treasure. I oh, I would accept tomorrow money. I think that's worth less than today's money though. Ooh, Ooh. he's right. You got to adjust yeah. for inflation. But you already right. said it now. You're, now you're committed. You're right. Now that's you have true. to. Now you, you have to accept tomorrow's money. You got to take. I just keep falling into traps today. Yep. You're bad at math. That's that's on you. So it's very expensive for those who are learning, and they have to go deeply into debt. And this is part of the problem with our profession that I explore in that series. So what the writer has pulled off is the other route. You have two options: either you pay out of pocket. And you put it on credit cards while you're paying back your student loans and while you're not making a lot of money because you're in your internship years. It's a very difficult situation to be in. Or option two, you go work for a company. That's what the writer did. The writer went and worked for a company and that company said, all right, one of the perks you get for working here is we will assign you a veteran therapist on our staff who will supervise you. They give that supervisor a little bit of money. And they do that because that's worth it to the company because now they can bring you on board. You're, you're a, a, you know, a lower level therapist, but they can totally make profit off of your work. And having the supervisor tutor you gives them that opportunity. That's what draws you in. Great. But you don't usually get great supervision because that person is still an employee of the same company as you and they're doing the job. And that's exactly what's happening in the story is the supervisor is seeing their own caseload of patients and then turning around and trying to supervise interns and they're burned out. They're burned out. And and that's one of the real challenges of our profession is that our apprentices get abandoned 
in this in this system because we do not have a system built to receive them. We have a burnout system that either burns out the finances of the intern to get quality supervision or burns out the, the supervisors who are working and trying to supervise. And usually you get group supervision. In an agency like this, the fact that this writer is even sitting with that supervisor one-on-one is honestly remarkable. You don't that, usually get that. Well, that also depends on the board requirements. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah some boards do some say boards won't it's got to be one-on-one. So. A lot of boards, though, will say it can be groups, yeah. and you'll find yourself in a room. And you and I were just talking about this the other day. I know a, a, a program in town that very much thrives off of interns and students, and they're just doing supervision with like 20 of them on a phone call with one supervisor, barely knows their names, but that's enough so that they can get their hour. And, uh, you know, that, that's what it is. It's usually piss poor supervision. And I don't know, Nick, I mean, I don't know if, if you'll be more, you know, critical of the supervisor. I guess when I set the stage like that though, just for the general listeners, so they understand some of the context of this letter, what's going on behind the scenes, you start to appreciate that. Okay. The system itself is kind of shitty. The system itself is shitty. I agree. I'm not going to fight that issue. However, if you're going to be a supervisor, you have a job to do. That's true. Yeah. And at the end of the day, yes, the system's fucked, but try to fix the system. But you can't then just say, well, system's fucked. So I'm just going to sleep through this supervision. Yeah. That's not okay. Like, no, like you, it's like if you care at all about the profession, you should care about giving something back to the people who are going to be taking it over. Yes. So I, I like I, I I take supervision very, very uh, seriously. Yeah. Because for all of my interns that I would supervise, and I would even tell them like I I'm taking this very seriously because at some point you're not going to be my interns anymore. Right. At some point you're going to be my colleagues out right. in the community. Right. And if you're doing a shitty job, then that affects all of us. Right. So it's not about, you know, my pride and me just wanting to make sure that my interns are are the best. It's no, it's like it's completely self-fulfilling or self self uh self oh Jesus, what's the word I'm uh, I don't know. Anyway, self-evident. Yeah, no. It doesn't matter. Uh, self-interest. It's, it's yeah. my own self-interest, right? To make sure that they're well-trained because they're going to be my colleagues. So, but that's just a different perspective. Do I have any suggestions on books? Oh yeah. Thank you for reminding mm-hmm. me. So, um, you, you mentioned the, the, uh, series that I've done in Patreon. I did a deep dive into a type of therapy called solution focused brief therapy, which Nick and I have talked about. I'm going to be releasing another one on another skill called motivational interviewing, which Nick and I have also talked about. I'm just trying to do a better job of like things that we have just casually mentioned on the show, doing that back of stage stuff where we can actually explain here's what a therapist is using in this technique and here's how that's helpful. But I'm also putting together a whole nother series after the seven deadly sins series, um, which is going to be the eight secrets of highly effective therapists. And this is something that I've talked about in Patreon that I am obsessed with. Do you have eight secrets or did you just pick a number and you're going to hopefully come up with eight? Eights eight were them? the researches. Yeah, eights okay. were the researches. This one's this one's already out what there. If, what if somebody comes up with a nine? If there's a ninth, then we add more episodes. I mean, that just gets to be another thing. There's a great book on this. There's a great body of research on this. And it's really a fun story to, and I won't get into it here. I'll talk about it on the Patreon Uh, But it's really fun to learn about the history of the science behind great psychotherapy and what we've learned in the field about who the best therapists are and and the fact that you can rank therapists and you can uh, see that there's a huge differential between very effective therapists and honestly bad therapists. And and it's really cool to see what the the great therapists are doing. Um, But there's a really good book that synthesizes all of this. It's by William R. Miller and Teresa B. Moyers. Miller and Moyers, Nick, also uh, founders of Motivational Interviewing. Mm. Uh, And and that theory, by the way, very intertwined with Mm -hmm. what is effective primarily and was very much born out of that research, which is really cool. But anyway, this book by Miller and Moyers is called Effective Psychotherapists, Clinical Skills That Improve Client Outcomes. This should be mandatory reading for all new therapists. And one of the things that we're going to talk about in my Seven Deadly Sins series is graduate schools could not give less of a fuck about what the best therapists do and what the most effective therapists do. 
They don't seem to prescribe this reading or even this topic, and most people graduate grad school and are completely unaware that there's any research whatsoever on how to be good at therapy. Uh, so it's on us, Nick. We have to be the ones that teach mm. these people and bring them up. So great question, writer. Check out that book. You'll really like it. And thank you for all the kind things you said about yes. listening to pod therapy. I, I hope there's more of you. I hope there's a lot more uh, interns and students that listen to this show because um, where else can you hear about a best man who wants to have sex with his uh, buddy's mom? Yeah. 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 Only on shows like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And jacking off rattlesnakes, which... True. You know, I have a lot of questions about him, to be honest. I have a lot of questions. I feel like about Jacob that. can the answer, answer most of those, those questions <laughs> is very carefully. Yeah, yeah. That's that's really it. You yeah. know, I don't know how you do it. An incredible amount of care yeah. goes into this. Uh high quality gloves. <laughs> yeah. Do not skimp on those gloves. Do you think they're snakeskin <laughs> gloves? They're not. But wouldn't they be? No. I no. mean, if you're okay, look. If now, I was going to be jacked off by no, no. a member of another species, now I'd be great just, with them wearing human skin gloves. Now you're just gloves. poking fun at the whole premise of this, <laughs> and I'm not going to go down this farcical path you're with right. you, Jim. I'm not taking it seriously. This yeah. is why you'll never be my best man. <laughs> <laughs> How are you expecting to give a best man speech? <laughs> you now, can't even get the facts right. You can't right. even take milking a rattlesnake seriously and just have a serious conversation about it. Shame on me. Yep. Shame on me. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Uh, is this in the thing? Oh, yeah. Look at you, Nick. You're like what? putting shit in the script now. Wow. What? The 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 thank yous. You actually built it in. It's not a separate. It's been document. in there. Oh, really? Been doing yes. it for a while. Good job. For like buddy. a year. Man, I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> That's what's fun about me. I keep rediscovering things. Oh, God damn. It. Uh, it's episode 301 yeah uh, what's okay. old is new again uh, as we wrap up the show we want to remind you go to patreon.com slash therapy get that extended show ad free day early and you get to enjoy that live chat discord community and our weekly deep dives interviews skill shares research roundups and rants we've got some new friends welcome to the Thera party who are the newbies Jack Tybert Tibbert right. I like Tybert and Jamie B that also feels right. Or Jamibi. I kind of say it as Jamibi. I don't know. Yeah. We also... But thank you. Because it's the you. first of the month. We want to uh, thank all the Therapods. We talk about Newstick, Robert Paulson, Polygon, Colin Scoopstronauts, Linda Brandmeier, Corey Owens, Joseph Pengrazio, Brad Kefauver, Christine Phillips, Gavin Bristow, Carrie Terhark, Stacey Westerland, Scoopy Scoopy Jess Jess, Ian Whitefall, Kiwi Fruit Scoop, James K, Chelsea Saracen, Craig Little, Katie Chiwakowski, Don Dore, Jim Hunter, Adam Rabiznik, spelled like it sounds, Oki Scoop, Brooks Lyle, Matthew Nair, Take It EV Podcast, Todd Canfield, Felicia Butler, David Sorensen, Shayla Bullock, Scoopatron, Lauren Izzo, in the Izzo, Stacey Coleman, Adam Petanuzo, Lats, Matt Lenegren, not Lats Manigren, that would be dumb, Heather, Scoopiter Ascending, Ian Soto, Jessica Cyphers, that Josh guy, Lee Popsicle, love that dude, Dr. Scoop, Little Mama, Ninja Scoop, James Dawson, Colson Morrow, Jacob Harrington, Sarah Olo, Grumpy Lake Mead Park Ranger, Sam Buck, Karen McCulloch, Megan Smith, Kate with an I, What Weekend, Some Nobody, BP, Lila, Be Gay, Do Crimes, Kelly Gagner, Nippy, Brian Emra, Drew Helogy, I think it's Helogy, Alec Lancaster, Matthew Johnson, A Literal Pickle, Matthias Vandebrandt, James Hubble, Max the Ginger Scoop, Ken Tinsley, Kimis Stacy, Protect and Scoop, Ulti Ingi, Anon and Nurse, Andrea Savadra Molina, Cody the DeLorean Guy, Jim Mills, Smells Funny, Brady Malachek, Matt Kubik, Julius Kappel, Chad Chad the Safety Lad, Walker Fluke, Philip Guyton, Tim Mystery, Almost Doctor, Nurse Joey, good job, Nick. Duffy, the slowly getting their therapist bear. Joel McMillan, Nico, Christopher DeGersey, Gersey, Kirk Graham, that feels right. Your Irvin Santon, Trisha Ortiz, Kirsten Johnson, DJ Seawert, Miss Zippy Hippie, Tiny Home Traveling, Chris and Alyssa, Scott A, Melissa L. Geisler, Laura B, Patty Glad, Chris Conway, Christopher Aguire, Fifi. Eli, Heather W., Kyle, David Williams, Kate, please, Todd, 
Roman Anthony Camarada, Freya Lawson, Travis Eric Dyer, Emma Kane, Starchke, Susan Kathleen, Adam Warren, Joe Beth Bowers, Mark Orellana, Buddy Dobbins, Tron Tastic, <laughs> I like that name, Mike V, Stephen Landon, Shy Ruparel, Elena, 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 I don't care, Bourbonator, K Pizzle Dizzle. <laughs> Michael Z. Logan, Robert Cole, Kenneth Wong, and John Finlayson. And, and that is why we left all those names for Jim to do. God damn. Because nobody does them better. <laughs> yep. And thank you to our third actals, Ice Blue Scoop, Brian Lehman, Scott Brady, Fred Bashara Jr., Andrea Anderson, Lindsay Bashara, Frozen Cusser, Lori Eltroth, Ryan Stewart, uh, Richard Bruins, Robert Ward, Chris, Cy Shonigan, Dang Butter, Andrew Langmead, Lovely Sparks, Celeste Quintero, Kirst, Kristen Robbins, and TKO. And TKO. TKO. Is that it? TK, yep. TKO? Yep. Like a TKO. Like yep. a total knockout? Yep. And of course, thank you to our Thera partners. Talk about Dirty B, Myra, and Pickett. Every time I say Pickett's name, I, I hear the Beastie Boys in my head. Like that's that's okay. how I kick it. Mm, dun, dun. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but they're not saying pick it. You know that, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. no, I, they say kick it. Yes, 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 yes. All right, okay. I, I say that because and we're on the same page. All right, all right, all Stale we'll bread see. has the same mouthfeel as toast. Uh, that's. Uh, and we want to thank our bosses, the Saccharin Sixteen, the Mysterious and Shrouded Illuminati members of the fan club, the Thera Producers. Thank you, Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Don, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Mrs. and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Mason Miller, Richard Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley Slapping Your Face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, University Jeff, Mike Helm, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder Cougar, Falcon Scoop, Matt and Lisa Tangeman, hell, Oscar Swanros, a sunny boy, Slurpy Kaye, motherfucker, Sandra McWaffle, Dan Martin, and Hannah Marie. And if you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited, then why wouldn't you? And enjoy our spontaneous side projects, go to patreon.com slash therapy, and thank you for supporting mental health. That's all the time we got for this week's session. Want to thank our landlords, Matt Mattingly's Ice Cream Social Podcast, and thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today. We really appreciate it. Remember, pod therapy isn't something to keep all to yourself. Share the episode with the world. Tag us on the socials when you do. It's at Pod Therapy Guys on Twitter and Instagram. It's slash Pod Therapy on Facebook. Don't forget about all the extra goodies at patreon.com slash therapy. Do you want to submit a question to the show? Ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangerine. I'm Jim Jobin. Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointments next week. Bow, 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 yeah, bow. so his mom would walk bow. around like we'd be getting ready for bed, and his mom would just be walking around uh, like in a night shirt. And yeah. oh, that would just that would do it for me. <laughs> it was honestly shit. I like couldn't that. get to the bathroom fast enough. Yeah. <laughs>